Good Monday evening to you guys. It is good to see you and it is good to be seen by you. I, of course, am the one and only Bill Zilby, aka the Dungeon Delver, coming to you live from an undisclosed location. Uh, but anyway, how is everyone? First of all, I want to say, uh, if you're one of the like nearly 100 people who has subbed since Friday, welcome and thank you. I am wowed. I am flattered. Thank you all so much. Um, whether you're coming on the heels of me talking about the uh, Larian Wizards of the Coast split, uh, whether it was from, you know, the the sad news about Jim Ward, but whatever makes you stick around, thank you. Thank you so much. And if you're just stopping by, if you've been sitting on the fence, if you've been waiting to make that decision, and it is a life-affecting decision, I understand completely, hesitate no longer. Please click the subscribe button, click the bell icon for notifications, and join us five nights a week where we live stream about classic tabletop RPG stuff. We have actual plays. We have we have guests. Uh, we do deep dives on things that I like, that you guys like. Um, so I, I would really, really appreciate it. And I think you would too. If you could click that button and, and join us here. Uh, but anyway, um, by the way, I'm sorry for the delay. I had a little technical issue with my camera. Every once in a while, my camera will lose its mind and I have to completely unload the battery, which requires dismounting the camera off of its frankly over-engineered mount. So that's, I was like, okay, let's go. Why don't I have a picture? So I had to run over there and I had to do all this stuff. So I apologize for the delay. That's longer than I like to uh, uh, make you guys wait especially since I was in the, the live chat saying, hey, the show's about to start. Um, had I known that the camera was going to throw up, as uh, my daughters used to say when they were young, uh, I would have seen to it first. But these things happen, and, you know, that is kind of the way how it is, because I am the guy. Like, people are like, uh, who is it? Someone is, uh, uh, Don McVitie was, D and I were talking late last night, and he said, well, I assume you have someone who does this thing over here. I'm like, no, Don, I don't. <laughs> it's just me. Just me, baby. Just me. So anyway, um, that's, what's, uh, that's, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. Speaking of Don, speaking of Don, this live stream is brought to you by our friends at Hellebard Games. Hellebard makes the kind of adventures they would like to play, whether it's for first edition, uh, excuse me, almost slipped up there, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, Castles and Crusades, or the OSR, which means, yeah, you could technically use it for first edition AD&D. Old School is in play at the table with Hellebard Games, and you can find them on Drive-Thru RPG or on their website, hellebardgames.com, and they are linked down below they are linked in the chat uh 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 description not the chat the description just to the the side of the chat but anyway um so that's uh that's that's all the call to action kind of stuff uh we we have got some fun planned for you guys this week uh i'm, I'm just taking it easy this week is frankly what I'm doing as opposed to all that hard work that I am usually uh, that I'm usually doing um, this week. We have no guest, but I did that on purpose because we're going to, we're going to chill out. We're going to have Wednesday and Thursday is just us. Okay. It's just us. Nobody's coming over. You don't have to vacuum the living room. We don't have to get the good China out. We we can drink from those souvenir plastic mugs. You know the ones. We we got them at Six Flags last year. And eat hot dogs and potato chips in the living room. That's what we're going to do. All right? That's what we're going to do. 
um, we are we are going to relax. We're going to put our feet up, and we're just going to have a good time. Hey, the Dungeon Minister, one of my favorite people. By the way, if you're not subscribed to the Dungeon Minister on YouTube, let me let me just uh, let, let me just ask you something. How dare you? Who do you think you are? Not being subscribed to the what do you what do you think you're better than him? No, seriously, uh, go subscribe to Dungeon Minister's channel. He's a fantastic channel. He does weekly recaps of his amazing BX game that he plays with his family. He has a convention. He like he carries the burden of spirituality for a congregation on his shoulders. And I don't say that as a joke. I'm not like trying to make a little snappy. There's no punchline to that. And he games, and he's a family man, and he does a convention. I mean, honestly, if he started making his own miniatures line and his own modules, I wouldn't be surprised, okay? Uh, but check him out on uh, the, uh, the the YouTubes. He's uh, You can find him. I do recommend you subscribe, so please do that. Um, but speaking of conventions and the Dungeon Minister, I have got something to share with you guys tonight, but we're going to get to that when we get to that. Uh, so yeah, so tomorrow night. Now, if you're just, if you just subscribe to the channel and you're like, hey, this guy's got a lot of important, informative, cool stuff that he talks about. Uh, what more does he do? Tomorrow night, we are going to be having an actual play of first edition advanced dungeons dragons that guy over there in the channel tim m holt he's gonna be here doom sword death master thane kyle kevin mobius mark uh it, it's 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 gonna be the, this this cavalcade of adventurers and we are currently playing through a1 slave pits of the undercity that's right, the classic Dave Cook first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons module. This party of adventurers is slogging their way through, and it is, uh, we ended on a cliffhanger last week, guys, is what I'm saying, okay? So this is a great place to jump in. You're going to want to watch it. It's, it's going to be a load of fun. If you've never played this module, if you've played this module a dozen times, if you've only ever read it, be here tomorrow night to watch the action and i know what you might be thinking i know what you might be thinking you might be sitting out there thinking um i watch people play D, &D. why why would i watch people play D, &D? couple of reasons first of all this is first edition ad and this is the classic it's the best why wouldn't you but second of all, and most importantly, guys, this is not a static thing, okay? This, this is not, um, th this is not, well, you're, you'll just sit there with your, uh, sit there on your hands. Hey, Sabo, good to see you. It's Fifle, everybody. I miss your stuff. Please come back to us on the art front. I hope you get your tablet back soon. Um, if you've never played classic Dungeons and Dragons and you're fascinated by it, like, hey, how does this work? How does it do? How does it go? And you're watching us play, ask. I will do my level best to answer your questions. And if I don't know the answer, somebody in the audience might. I've got a pretty smart audience, folks. So if you're like, eh, wait, you said roll initiative and it's just one person and it's a D6. Why that? You know, uh, why do you go into percentiles when the dude just wants to like try and tackle a dude? All of those questions we can answer for you. It is a learning experience. It is an educational experience, guys. And I hope it's something you'll all sit and partake in. Kabuki, I'm still looking for it. Um, so apparently I uploaded the same uh, interview twice for the fourth Jim Ward interview. Uh, 
or one of them. I've got to sit down and watch all of them and figure out which one is missing. So, um, well, wonderful wizard of games asked a good question there and I want to answer this. In fact, I'm going to put this up even though, you know, um, let's see. So despite my feelings on Matt Colville, uh, have I ever considered borrowing his running the game styles of videos to teach people how to run an old school game with old school mechanics? Uh, I've already done that. Uh, I, I started doing that like 18 months ago. We have an entire how to play first edition AD and D for both character for both players and for DMs. We we've got a we got a whole series, wonderful wizard of games. Uh it's out there on the YouTube channel. Um I'm quite proud of it. Many people watch it and enjoy it. So uh I'm not sure when Mr. Colville started doing his thing. But uh, maybe he borrowed from me. I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying it's possible. I'm just saying it's possible. Um, we don't say those words, Michael. We don't say rooting against Bama. We don't do that. But anyway, um, so three and four were clones. That means... Uh, that, that means uh, I need to find the third one, I think. But anyhow, uh, let's let's press ahead. And let's talk about uh, what's going on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're gonna have another kind of let's play, but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna hold that one close. I'm gonna hold that one close. I think it's going to be neat. I think you guys are really going to like the Wednesday when we kind of deep dive on something Dungeons and Dragons, but it isn't really, but it is, but not really, but it is. Um, and we're, we're going to let's play it. But that's all I'm going to say for now. You'll know when the thumbnail comes up on Wednesday afternoon. I am, Kevin, uh, my my deepest condolences go out to those the only game i ever got to play with jim was dragon's lair dragon lairds when he was play testing that and uh it was it was a lot of fun but i always enjoyed talking with uh with uh with jim he was a, he was a sweet guy he was a sweet guy okay so uh let's uh let's move on um, so that's Wednesday, Thursday, as I said, there ain't no guest. We ain't going to do nothing. We don't want to. Um, I think we're going to start the deep dive for dungeon module L2, the next in the Lindor Isle series. That's right. The next of the late great Len Lakofka's module series. We're gonna get into that. You guys excited about that? I am. Friday, we're back to the wastelands with Gamma World. So we're gonna do um we're gonna do some Gamma World. And that's gonna be oodles of fun. So um I hope you guys will stick around. I hope you will stay. Uh, and and do that. And if you really want, if you want to support the channel beyond just subscribe, and and let me tell you what, subscribing, commenting, uh, leaving a comment on this video if it's post ex facto, um, that is all super helpful. But if you're like, but what can I do more? For as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show on Patreon or on YouTube. Oh, that's I need to do that. I need to adjust it so. Uh, it, uh, YouTube memberships are the, the bottom of YouTube memberships is only a buck also. So, um, so that's the week, that's the week ahead. Um, and we're gonna, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna talk about that. I have interstitial videos coming out. And as I said last week, guys, I'm not doing negative anymore. All right. I'm just, I, I, I'm not, look, if wizard screws up 
if there's something bad that happens, I'm going to report on it and I'm not going to try and put a smiley face on it, but I'm not going, I'm not going outrage mining anymore. I'm just not going to do it. All right. It's too much of my energy pulled into, uh, uh, let me, let me take a, a, a stock ticker report about Hasbro's finances that I could ramble off in two minutes, stretch it into a 10 minute video and hope I get 50 subs. You know, I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. So let's talk about things that we're going to talk about tonight. And the first big thing I want to talk about is the great underground online gaming convention, the third guac. What is guac? You may ask. It's not just a delicious avocado dip to have with your nachos. No, no. The Great Underground Online Gaming Convention is a convention that we hold every spring. It is a virtual convention for now and probably forever. Um, I, you know, Jorge mentioned crypto. Um, how do you get crypto if you don't have crypto and you don't you don't want to build a, a mining rig? You spend what? And if currency, fiat currency, government printed currency is bad, why do the people who have the Bitcoins accept cash for it? Shouldn't you just give it to me? Shouldn't I just be able to order up some Bitcoin so I can spend it somewhere? All the people who have Bitcoin always talk about its valuation in dollars. Why is that? But anyway, let's move on. Um, so back to the guac, back to, to the Great Underground Online Gaming Convention. It's right here, folks. It's right here. It's over on Warhorn. It won't be next year. Tabletop.events will be our site. We are moving to tabletop events next year. Uh, Warhorn was okay last year with a few bumps. It was okay this year, but the bumps were in completely different places. So um, I think that's probably a, a, a good take on it, Volcano God. Um. <laughs> Corian coin. Yeah, well, of course, Corian coin. I, I'm, I'm calculating a million hashes a second for Corian coin. Um, but anyway, so right there, you can sign up. Now, you may be asking me, how much does it cost? Bill, it, guys, it costs nothing. It's free. It's over on Discord. Well, you sign up on warhorn.net. Be a game master. Be a player. Sign up for games. Meet people you've never met before in a virtual space. No hotels. No no rental car fees. No overpriced food and booze. Unless you want to go someplace really expensive and then bring it to your house and eat on your couch as you play or at your desk or whatever. This is what I do. This is my little way of giving back to you guys. I, I once, I once put forward when my channel hit a thousand, I said, when my channel hits a thousand subs, I'll do a game demo for you guys. I'll do a game that a, a day that is just a game demo. And then people are like, well, what about two game demos? Oh, okay. I could demo some games. I could have a day, a day of game demos. What about people playing along with you? Okay. We could do a mini con of a day. Okay. Well, we could do like two. And well, now here we are. So. This, this is just kind of my way of trying to give back, trying to show a little bit of gratitude to you guys who've, who've done so much. And um, I feel like I'm sitting in a hole. Is my ca camera, I bumped it up when I had to adjust it. That's, yeah. Um, so sign up for the con, join us. Play some games, run some games. 
I'm going to be running stuff. I have to put my stuff in the grid, but I already have a how to play first edition AD&D. If you've never played first edition AD&D, sign up for it. Join in. Um, Take the colloidal silver pieces, Kabuki. Uh, if I ever hit 10,000 subs on this channel, and guys, we're within striking distance of 6,000 now, which I'm just over the moon about. Probably by the end of this year, I'm, I'm guessing we'll hit 6,000. Could be by the end of the month. I don't know. But if this channel ever hits 10,000 subscribers, I will organize a real in-person convention. That one won't be free, guys. All right. A, a, a little tiny convention can, can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Oh, my wife's cat tried to get on my lap and fell off. Can cost thousands and thousands of dollars to, um, to organize. So I want to be very careful about that. So the guac is what I've got. And breaking news this weekend about the guac. Um, we have merch. We have merch. Dungeon Minister has brought us merch. Uh, and we, we, we showed this off. This is just, uh, let me see. This is just one item. We have a throw pillow. We have a guac, th uh, three throw pillow. How can you not make it to the online convention? That doesn't compute. So Dungeon Minister has been putting this together. Sky Hernstrom did our art this year. Bless you, Sky. Namaste. I'm going to have to figure out how to get him uh, some, some bill coin. But look at that. Look at the stuff you can get as well as Dungeon Minister merch. We have tumblers, pint glasses, throw pillows. We have uh, welcome mats, unwelcome mats, coffee mugs, T-shirts, hoodies, water bottles, sports bras. Did we do the sports bras this year? Dungeon Minister, a little guac logo on each. I don't know if we did those. But um, I, it was joke fun. Anyway, uh, so now you can get your merch. Now you can be the coolest kid at the gaming store. Wow, what's the what's the great underground online gaming convention? Well, you had to be there. And then next year they will be. And, and all the previous year stuff too. You ever see that? Like I'm wearing a Gary Cotton 10 t-shirt. You can't get these anymore, right? And you might not want one. Right, you just said, well, that con happened and I wasn't there. Who cares? But if you do, if you get nostalgic for stuff that maybe you did or you didn't do and you just want people to think you did, don't be the person who doesn't do the thing that you didn't get to do and then make people think you did do the thing you didn't do, but you didn't do it so they don't think it. You know what I'm saying? So get yourself some guac merch right there. So uh, I, I, I hope you guys will check that out. Um, well, God bless you, Bob. I, I hope you'll uh, uh, you keep us posted. Let us know how you're doing. So, um, so we have the convention. We have the merch. Now we just need you guys. So come on over, sign up. Somebody was asking. Did somebody ask? I want to. I want to scroll up a little bit. Somebody said, uh, "Graph Paper Architect said, crud, need a new link, please, for guac. I can link guac. Let me just find that again. I will put that that merch link on the guac page tonight. By the way, so fear not." Uh, let me close that tab. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Here we go. So here we go. Here it is. There you have it.
the guac. So go sign up. Sign up for open another tab and sign up for the guac and then come back and watch more of the show. Speaking of conventions, that brings us to tonight's miniature. That's right. So every Monday night, we have Monday miniature di dungeon diorama. This isn't much of a dungeon. Uh, more and more of the miniatures you guys are going to see are going to be unpainted. <laughs> because my shelf of shame outnumbers my shelf of glory by... almost five to one. I'm not proud of that, by the way. I'm not bragging about that, but it is what it is. So let's take a look at the miniature. And I think you guys are going to know this, but uh, it might be a little obscure. So let's take a look. See, no diorama drama. Diorama Lama Ling Long. None of that. Let's hop over and take a look on the table cam and see what we can see and scope out tonight's miniature and what the story is behind it. Okay, so we have a fairly simple looking mini. A knight, sword out, shield up. He's wearing full plate. Some of you, that might be causing some... some some stuff to go on in your think meat. And if that's the case, you are not wrong. Now, first of all, no, he's not being eaten by, uh, by um, a blue blob. That's just blue tack. And he's on a misprinted 3D piece that I'm using as a paint handle. Um, so what, uh, what my dude there is, is he is the 2018... Gary Con official con miniature from Iron Wind Metals. And again, you might be thinking, gosh, that looks familiar. Something, you know, here, I'll turn it around. We'll look at the back. Somebody was yelling for focus. Look, that's as good as it gets. I'm sorry. That is as good as it gets. I have one really awesome camera, and it, it's it's the one across the table from me that looks at me. Um, but I will tell you guys, again, this is the 2018 miniature. So what's going on with that miniature? Am I going to paint that mini? I am absolutely going to paint that mini. So what's going on with the miniature? It draws just a little bit of inspiration from this jewel right here. Behold, guys. That's right. Iron Wind Metals made a Paladin in Hell mini. Now his sword is held in a different position. And don't think for a minute that I didn't think about kit bashing him, but the availability of those was limited. I bought one and then I circled back around and bought it again. I was so scared of FOMO that I had forgotten that the previous day I had bought one, which I, by the way, blame fully on Volcano God because he took me up there and um, let's just say I wasn't driving. <laughs> so, um, so that is, uh, the Paladin in Hell miniature from Iron Wind Metals. And that was the official miniature of, uh, Gary Con 10. And I scooped him up. Like I said, I had the, uh, I, I had the, the two of them. And I realized, oh crap. And then uh, a friend of mine was like, I will buy the other one. For, please sell me the other one. So I, I parted uh, I, I parted ways with it. So I do not have him. Um, it's, it, it's, well, I mean, he's in plate, you know, just full head to toe, full plate mail. 
So not a huge amount of detail. It's smooth metal, right? Uh Uh, that is um, that is David Sutherland, by the way, Timothy. That is David C. Sutherland. And my buddy Paul Stormberg owns the original art. He actually, back in the 90s, bought the original piece of art for A Paladin in Hell. And maybe one day, if Paul doesn't completely hate me for the door debacle at uh, GaryCon uh, this late year, maybe I'll get to see it. David C. Sutherland the third. Uh, somebody asked uh, what this. Well, I talk about the woke new Vegas mod called Fallout Ashfall. Uh, I I won't because I have no. Uh, I I I don't know about it. Uh, how to exist pranks and tutorials? I don't. I I, I am not aware of that. Uh, I'll do a little bit of homework on it, but I'm not sure that it really kind of goes down the alley that, that we that we generally speaking talk about here. Um, graph paper architects. Uh, okay, so I talked about this already, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and mention this. Um, oh, uh, before I dive down that rabbit hole, uh, wonderful wizard of games, probably Mordenkainen. Uh, we will do a deep dive one day of Mordenkainen's Fantastic Adventures. Uh, I would say Igwilv, but at this point, Igwilv is no longer mortal. She is in a she is on one of the lower planes and would probably be the equivalent of like a 35th level magic user, but she is biding her time to become a demigoddess and try and reconquer the Flannus. Um, ooh, I've said too much. But um Let's uh let's let's not worry about that right now. So anyway, that is tonight's miniature. I will try to put up painted miniatures, even if they don't have as cool of a story uh from now on. But uh to press ahead. So if you were at Gary Khan. And I, I've already talked about this. I've already given you guys the inside baseball. There was a massive 28 millimeter scale cathedral level of the Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, Doug Waltman sculpted the thing and put it together. I did the 3D modeling on many of the fixtures that Doug then added on. Uh, the demon faces stuck all over it were mine. The windows were mine. All the spikes on the roof hundreds of spikes on the roof were mine um the inner doors were mine um the little gargoyle fixtures here and there were mine um i michael i'm just busy i i'm i'm gonna try this weekend so uh over months, I printed up uh, just a ton of fixture, and there was a lot of back and forth about appropriate scale. And there were okay, so like the doors, um, and the gargoyles and the masks, I just found STLs of those and scaled them appropriately and then printed them. The spikes I had to make from scratch. If you know T1 to 4, the Temple of Elemental Evil, the outermost doors to the cathedral are bronze. They are just solid bronze metal, smooth, featureless. Well, doors like that don't exist in STL format. So I created some, printed them, painted them because it was 11th hour when I realized that they needed them put them to the scale that I was asked to or that I thought was appropriate, and I overnighted them to Lake Geneva. Uh, the Grand Geneva fumbled, but they recovered their fumble. And the whole frame for the doors was both 
too wide and too tall to fit into the model. Now, I don't know what possessed me to not assemble the doors. It's basically, it's three pieces. It's a, it's a large door frame. Then there's an inner door frame that slides down and holds the doors in place on the hinge pins. So it's, and then there's the two doors themselves. So it's, it's four pieces basically. And normally once you put the doors in place and slide the inner brace, you glue the whole affair together and then that's it. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I just didn't. And thank God I didn't because Paul was actually able to use the doors. Not the, not the doorway, but the doors. So I was all happy that it got found. And then when I started seeing pictures that people were taking before the game, because it was at the Geneva Library. Doug's model was at the Geneva Library. Um, I, 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 I saw some of those pictures and I was worried. I was very worried because that doorway didn't look like it was the right size at all. My, to fit the door that I was sending. But I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. So the night came when the doors were finally acquired. And I just saw that the doors had been blue tacked or somehow set on either side like they were flung open. And then the next times I saw the um, pictures of the model, there was my doorway sitting in front of the hole. But it, it, it couldn't it couldn't fit in. So that's the story of the doors. That's why if you see the model and you're like, why doesn't the doorway look like it fits? So there, there's the door story. Any other questions? You guys are talking about like 80s cartoons. You know what's weird? Like I have no affinity for the Ghostbusters cartoon for He-Man and the Masters of the Universe for G.I. Joe. I I get it. <laughs> Thank you, Vanger. Thank you for the super. Hey, I moved heaven and earth to get them there. What is my favorite door song? Uh Roadhouse Blues. And I'll tell you why. Hey, Greg Myers. Uh, Roadhouse Blues is my favorite Doors song uh, because for the longest time... See, Daytona Beach in Florida used to be cool and then college kids discovered it. MTV went there a bunch of years and then it became not cool. But for the longest time... Just south of the band shell on the seawall was spray painted and it was occasionally retouched and it was just straight up graffiti. It was not like a nice mural or anything, but somebody would come back and spray paint a hundred feet long in three foot high letters, woke up this morning, got myself a beer. It fade out. The city would paint over it. Somebody would come and spray paint it back. And when I was 10 or 12 years old and I first saw it, I didn't know what that was in reference to. And one day when I was in my slightly later teens, I heard Roadhouse Blues for the first time. I was like, God, that I get it now. And it is a very, very Volusia County song. If you know anything about Florida, if Doomsword was here, Doomsword would absolutely agree with me that woke up this morning and got myself a beer is a Florida man slash Volusia County song. It is absolutely. So 
I would go Roadhouse Blues. The end is is my second. Somebody had asked upstream, what about uh, what about the three D channel? Like I said, I hope to get to it. <laughs> Ironically, the thing that's slowing me down is three D printing. <laughs> it is. It really is. You know what I never understood about the Lost Boys soundtrack? The guy who did Cry Little Sister, Ger Gerald, I can't remember his last name anyway. Um, like, you would think a dude that did a, that like dropped a goth track like that, that he would just, j just be like a runaway. It's awesome. To, yeah, no. No, I tried to listen to like another song by him. I don't even remember what it was. I was just like, this sucks. Hey, Paint Minis Live. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. But, um, people are strange oh no the the dog the song in the strange days yeah yeah that well rayman's an eric man he, he, he tore it up absolutely prong somebody suggested a recent album of theirs and i went back and i was do a little bit and i was like holy shit this sounds just like they sounded like in like 1989 1988 and, and that's a good thing. That is a ridiculously good thing. Thing, thing, singular. Somebody was mentioning, because I, I really like this. Oh yeah, so yeah, Roadhouse. Um, it was weird uh, seeing um, Critical Drinker review that Roadhouse because I've been to all the places that are in that movie. Uh, most of it looks like it was shot up on Taverner Key, which is north in the Keys, um, and the 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 bar. I've I've been to that place a few times. Dungeon Delver reboot AI version. I had to do that. I had to like set up a script with Chat GPT one night, and um, uh, I, I've got an Eleven Labs uh, account. Just like feed Chat GPT info about me and have it say things. Have, have Chat GPT answer questions for you guys. And then run it through Eleven Labs and play it back for y'all. Me versus AI me. Would you guys want that just for fun? I can't hear Roadhouse without thinking of uh, uh, Let's Have a Patrick Swayze Christmas uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Tim can arrange that. All right, Tim. I have an Eleven Labs account. If if you want if you want to work the technical end of that, and I'll 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 set up my uh, uh I'll set up uh all, all the stuff I need to. Dungeon Delvers is not the air. No, you're you're the mirror universe. Me, there was a transporter accident, and Dungeon Delvers and I uh, switched places one night. But we're back to where we should be. It was wild. He had a goatee and a and a gold sash and was, you know, all like, you know, death to Zayon. I'd be careful with that. YouTube will pick up certain things. Great old ones. Hello. Cthulhu Fatang. I, uh... Mark Morrison. Hello. I think it would be hilarious just just to see 
because I'll have to take transcripts. Of what is I'm going to have to go through videos and and get transcripts and feed enough to to Chat GPT so it'll understand my style. And then Tim, we got to talk about this. We 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 got to make this happen. Tim Tim's got uh. He, he's got he's got the tech chops, I guess is what I'm saying. Tim's got the tech chops. What are some of the all-time best Amiga games? Okay. Um, Intruder Alert has the best soundtrack. Uh, Falcon. Uh, Operation Thunderbolt and Operation Counter-Strike uh, were probably the best realizations of the, of the early Falcon games. Um... And I know it's like every European I ever met when it came to Amiga games was like, uh, Ooh, do you have uh jump and hop three? I'm like, no, I, I Amiga users were weird. They just like freaking side scrolling platformers and Pac-Man ripoffs. And I was just like, you have something that's like twice as powerful as a color Mac that cost a third of the price or anyway. Um, but, uh, best Amiga games. Oh, Dragon's Lair. Yeah. The, the guy. So Dragon's Lair was a weird thing. Uh, Linden, the guy, the programmer who wrote Dragon's Lair for the Amiga, Randy Linden brilliant guy uh second life he and his wife created second life together um but yeah he ported dragon's lair to the amiga it was on like 11 floppy disks but at the time it was the only pc that had a fidelity reproduction of dragon's lair it was nuts um see you around daniel uh I'm gonna, oh, that's a good question, Mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start and come back to it. Uh, but anyway, um, so good Amiga games. Uh, like I said, Intruder Alert. Um, there was a four-person first-person shooter where you played a mercenary team. That one was really good. Uh, if TFX had gotten a proper release, I think it would have been a killer app on the Amiga because flight sims were just getting big and it came out just as Commodore was starting to go down. Um, anything CinemaWare was good. Uh, it came from the desert, uh, the Rocketeer. Um, Defender of the Crown, Defender of the Crown 2. Those were all amazing games on the Amiga. Yeah, Archon and Battle Chess on the Amiga were great too. Anyway, uh, so what was it? What was the question here? Mark Morrison asks, so what do you fellow DMs do when you have DM burnout? I'm a forever DM, it seemed. Players are all great friends, but no one wants to run anything. I don't mind DMing, so it's a little less of a problem to me. Um, but I will... You know, if nobody wants to run, you might just have to take a break. You might just have to say, guys, you know, I need a couple of weeks to creative refresh myself. Because do they just want you going through the num, just going through the motions, or do they want a good game? No D and D is better than bad D and D. So take a week, take a session, take two or three, wash your brain out, and come back to it refreshed. That's my advice. Retro video game stream in the future. Uh, early on in the in the the life of the channel, I did try to stream Pool of Radiance. I may go back and do that again. I may go back and restart a Pool of Radiance party and just like live stream it on on Saturday nights. And like you know, if you guys super like you know you you super to name a character or something like that. I may do that. Uh, 
Um, so I have missed any questions. Let's see. Lemmings was a great game too. That music. <laughs> you know, you know the the music, and then you just make them explode. So I know now I'm creating six different timelines. <laughs> Dungeon Delver said, "One day I should run as uh, I should run as five E game, and you'll run my one E game." Your players will be very angry when they, when you get back and they're like, we had to roll up new characters. All of ours are dead. Bill ran something called the, called the Crypt of Horror, Tomb of Something. We're all dead. He said we didn't get saving throws when we touched the, when we, we touched the, the, the black no-no ball. Yeah, the Mike Nesmith, uh, Frank Zappa thing was that that was very cute. I rem this is like I'm kind of showing my age here, but um, wow, 51 guys. If you haven't already liked the video and you like the video, give it a thumbs up to show that you like the video. That kind of engagement is really, really super cool. Um, but uh, Joe Piscopo came out one night. Like literally the opening of David Letterman, Joe Piscopo came out dressed as David Letterman, doing a David Letterman impression. And he was in full makeup. It was very funny. I remember seeing that being like, what? Now, it wouldn't work today on a high def TV, right? But this was 240 lines on a 19 inch Zenith color set. It would not work. That's wonderful, Dungeon Minister. That is absolutely wonderful. Bill Silvius, Kyle Schumann invite. Oh, I didn't, I didn't catch the back half. That wouldn't work. That would not work at all. Kyle would have to wear a fat suit. Okay. He would have to grow his hair out and wear a fat suit. I, I would have to wear multiple girdles and one of those muscle tees. <laughs> Any game horror stories? Um, I will tell... I will tell a game horror story. Because we're coming up on an hour. Um, evening Flint Fire Forge, hello. We're coming up on an hour, and I got ad and here in, in about a half an hour. Um, oh, that's fine, Dungeon Delvers. <laughs> uh, I think the best way to do things like that is if everybody does pre gens, you know, you just hand it, hand them new characters and do that. Um, QPF says there are skits and old SNL that certainly wouldn't fly, to, fly today. Uh, Chevy Chase and Richard Pryor. And if you know the skit I'm talking about, you absolutely know that. No, 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 no. Okay, so here we go. Here is a game store horror story where I was cornered and exposed to the game store employees macro vor furry crush fetish if you don't know what those things are don't google them don't google them just be happy that you don't know them don't be there don't let this be the reason why you go i missed five minutes ago when i couldn't see <laughs> um so i go into the store and geeks will talk to each other, right? And I'm just picking up some paints. This was not my FLGS, by the way. This was another game store here in Orlando. Because um, my FLGS at the time did not sell paints. But this place did, and this place has, by one name or another, been around for 50 plus years. So...
we are talking and we're talking about D&D. And of course, he wants to tell me a tale of tabletop triumph. He wants to be, you know, giving me like just one upmanship. It's fine. Whatever. I didn't even tell him that I worked for Gary once upon a time. I wasn't in the mood. So he starts, I, I, I made a comment about being perma DM. And my dude starts regaling me with the tale of his character. And how he'd gotten some art of his character. And how he'd really cheesed off the DM because his character uses special power before the big bad evil guy could finish his story and he just grabbed the big bad evil guy up and squashed him in his fist and then tossed him down his throat, chomp, chomp, chomp. And I, I wasn't putting two and two together. I should have been putting two and two together. He said, you know, I just had to get some art done. A friend of mine is a really good artist. I just had to get some art done. Let me show you the character. And so he's scrolling through his phone. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. It was an anthropomorphic dragon woman that had grown big, picked up the big bad evil guy, crushed him and eaten him and swallowed him. I was shot in the face with a quad barrel of fetish. Furry. Macro. Vor. Crush. I desperately wished uh, missed five minutes prior to that when I, I hadn't seen it. And I was like, ha ha, wow, that's cool. Well, I'm just going to take my paints and go. Uh, all of them, wonderful wizards, the, the response is all of them. What a terrible day to have eyes that was, or ears, or the ability to comprehend, or to have left my home. And I was just like, why? Why would you do this to me? My God, why hast thou forsaken me? But anyway, yeah, so there there's there's a there's a TTRPG horror story for you guys. And it just follows my my long standing personal policy and and watch race furries ruin everything. But anyway, but we're going to we're going to think about the good things guys. We're going to we're going to mentally cleanse ourselves out here. Um if you haven't signed up for the guac, if you haven't signed up for the great underground online gaming convention, I'm going to share that link one more time. I would really like you to I would really like you to go sign up, run a game, play a game. We're going to have an artist Sally. Richard Witters and Tracy Lesh are going to be there. We're doing like our, our panel discussion with uh, Matt Finch and our artist Allie. They're all going to be on the Discord. They're not going to be on the channel. So you can just be like, I'm not signing up for the con. I'm not going there. You'll have to be on the Discord. And the rooms, they'll sell out because I can do 22 other people in addition to myself and them. There's like 60 people so far signed up for the con. So if you want to hear Richard and Tracy talk about working for, for TSR and making Dungeons and Dragons and art in general and maybe sharing stuff and maybe selling stuff, you're, you're going to want to get in for that. And it's the same for Matt, you know? Matt's going to, we're going to have an open panel discussion. Uh, Wheeling Dragon, um, just cod piece armor class. But we can discuss that later. Timothy, uh, uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, 
so yeah, you guys are going to want to jump on that. If you've got games, uh, if you've got games that you want to get into the grid, do so. We've got just about a month, but we're getting there with a quickness, guys. We're getting there with a quickness. Um, and merch, merch for the con. Go to Dungeon Minister's site and buy your con merch, t-shirts, throw pillows, pint glasses, coffee mugs, notebooks, dice bags, everything, not, not just for Guac 3, but from Guac 2 and from Guac 1. It's worth every penny because spring makes good stuff. Uh, no, Wonderful Wizard of Games. The monk was introduced in um, either the Dragon or the Strategic Review, but he was available for OD&D, um, and he was uh, also in AD&D. So the monk is almost as old as Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons itself. Wheeling Dragon, I absolutely understand. Uh, Dungeon Delvers, um, I will see your, uh, sign up and I will flip the bit to where you are a game master. I will automatically set you to that. So fear not. All right, guys. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank, um, Wenger for the super. I really appreciate that. Thank you all for your wonderful chats and everything. We're going to be back tomorrow night. We're going to be playing some first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons for great justice and having a lot of fun when we try, uh, or rather when we find out, I'm not going to try anything. When we find out what happens to Doom Sword's character, ha ha ha. Um, but until then, guys, you know, keep the lookout, keep on the lookout for wandering monsters, especially owl bears. Peace. Have a lovely evening. Have you seen my owl bear? Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobs are all around, some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way off course? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smokey Joe's. Have you seen the little creep driving fast in his little green jeep? He smells like fish and brandy, but his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show, I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me 